Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this video we're going to be covering HEX, a mathematical approach to the charts. Remember if you like this kind of quantitative and technical hybrid analysis on HEX and more projects, leave a thumbs up, be subscribed by the end of the video if you aren't already, and let's go ahead and talk about this mathematical approach to the HEX charts that I've taken. If you're familiar with the channel and the models we use here on the channel, as well as the website, you then you are super familiar with what our exponential regression rainbow is. If not, if you're new, go to lookintohex.com slash regression rainbow or just lookintohex.com and then tap the regression rainbow uh, box, right? And, and you'll see what we're talking about. You get a, a little explanation here and the graphs, multiple models, our equidistant model and our Fibonacci space model. So go rummage around through the channel if you haven't uh, been been versed in this stuff yet. But if you are and you're familiar and you've been watching, then let's just jump right into it. So here is the the grand Google sheet right here. Here is what you see on the website. Whatever I edit on this specific chart, it automatically translates to an update on the website. Without going too much into depth of what this is, for those of you who are, are already familiar with this, let's just say that this red curve is a fit, right? Not logarithmic regression on a log scale, but linear regression on a log scale. So we did our linear regression, we got our, our red curve, our line, we looked at historical levels of overvaluation from that line to set up a set of, of lines. And that's what we have here. These are equidistant from each other on a log scale. We also have a Fibonacci space model, but that's that's for another video. We've already done a video on that. And if you normalize everything to the red line, right, which is our exponential fit or our linear regression on a log scale, right, if you normalize all of these curves and the price action itself to the red line, and by normalize, it means set the red line to one, so everything else is just relative to it, right? then you get something that looks like this. And again, this is our equidistant model, not our Fibonacci space model. Um, although I will note that for both models, the boundaries are the same. So the red and the pink are exactly the same. Everything and the green actually, right? The midpoint, everything, uh, everything else is slightly spa space different, but effectively it's the same model. So normalize all, normalizing all of the data to the red line gives you this, okay? And here, yeah, before we get into that, okay. So this actually wasn't my idea. It was actually an idea of a buddy of mine, super smart. And I asked him like, what, what do you think of this model? And he said something, albeit super simple, it was genius. He said, well, what's the average um, extension from the red fit? Great question, right? In your mind, you might think, well, isn't it the green curve, the midline, isn't it the average? Well, not necessarily, right? Because this pink curve, the boundary, the upper boundary is fit to just like a data point, like a single data point or two, actually it's a single data point of overvaluation. So the significance of it is speculative at best of the pink curve anyways. The red curve is fit, however, to literally weeks, weeks of data, right? A bunch of clusters, four clusters, and actually, it might even be a good idea to refit the data. Let me know if you think that's a good idea because just to go off on a slight tangent here before we get into the good stuff, our exponential fit is really just fit to these regions over here. And we've talked about this and the reason I'm bringing this up will be clear in a second. So our, our line is fit to these four clusters of data a few days here, a couple days here, a bunch of days here, a bunch of days here. And then we get our, our mathematical curve. Now, do you think, and I've been thinking about this, do you think it's a good idea? Because it landed so damn nicely on this, uh, this day here, April 28th, 29th, and bounced after we had fit the data, right? Because we'd only fit it to up to here. However, our expected value was hit damn near perfectly. Right, and you can see it over here when we hit the red super nicely and bounced off. So do you think it's a good idea to include in the new fit maybe two, three, four, five days from here? 
So that would essentially be refitting the curve and it would change the angle just slightly to accommodate for new data. So I might do that. I think that's a good idea. And um, yeah, let me know in the comments whether you think that's a good idea. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But with that said, the red curve is fit to a bunch of data points. Pink curve, not so much. However, when you ask what's the average, right, getting back to that thread, what's the average extension from the exponential fit? Well, it changes every day, right? Just like um, a moving average. So what we did is we got, or I got a lifetime extension from the fit moving average. Okay. And that's this dotted sort of um, pinkish grayish curve over here. So what is this? Like I said, it's taking the price data points and simply giving you a moving average of length n where n is the actual day since launch. So what, what the hell do I mean by that? It means that look where it started. It start so on day one, your average, well, if you're averaging just one data point, your average is that data point. So I think we started about 11 X overvalued from this fit, right? And so your average is 11. However, once we had two days of data, then you average those two. After three days of data, this takes an average of those first three days. So it takes an average of the first n days for any given day. So it's going to start becoming less volatile over time, start smoothing out because you're, it's becoming a longer term moving average. So this is a dynamic moving average. It's not like your 20 day MA. It's an n day MA where n itself is changing. <laughs> Yeah, it's a moving average where the length of the moving average is also moving. Pretty interesting. I don't, I don't know what you'd call that. Um, a dynamic moving average. So here you have your lifetime extension from the fit dynamic moving average. We, we'll call it that. And so here on day 536 from when we started taking data, which was like December 14th, 2019. Then this year is a 536 day moving average of price extension from our exponential fit. Now, does it provide significance? Well, I think over time it'll start providing more and more significance because it's smoothing out. And notice that we did have kind of like a little bounce over here before coming back down. Once we broke it, it was quite the waterfall. And then we actually found it as resistance over here. So it's speculative, right? But I think it's an interesting curve because it, it shows you how the green curve itself is not necessarily your average extension, right? It's just kind of the midpoint of the model, but also notice how the lifetime extension from the fit dynamic moving average, this curve is more or less oscillating around the green, right? It started above the green, like abandoned a half above the green, dipped abandoned a half below the green, came back up to about half a band above the green. And then now it's, approximately half a band below the green. So I think it's interesting and it gives us some insight to where our fair value of of hex could be, right? And we'll we'll go into another model shortly, but where where is this at now? It's at 4.22x from the exponential fit. And the green curve is around 4.93x from the exponential fit. So 4 to 5x from the exponential fit where is our exponential fit? We just have to go up here. Currently our exponential fit is around the 2.5 cent mark. So 4x above that, 10 cents, 5x above that, 12 and a half cents, more or less. So that gives us kind of a, an idea of where our fair value of hex could be. And currently this chart is telling us around 10 to 12 cents, which funny enough is the target for our ascending triangle slash bull flag that we've been following. So convergence of models is generally a good sign because they agree with each other. Again, not financial advice. However, it looks good, right? I think it looks good. And then I wanted to just dive into a slightly less messy model. This here, funny enough, looks very similar to that random line on Twitter you guys um, like to have fun with. But this is actually the gist of the green curve, right? If we just get rid of everything else, and just look at the green curve, which seems to be a sort of a rough estimate of our of our fair value, given how the this lifetime dynamic MA is moving around it and like oscillating around it. So 
it's, it's a fair assumption, right? That it's our fair value. And so you can do the same model we did here, extension from the exponential fit to get an extension from fair value model. And it looks exactly the same in shape. If you look at it, exactly the same in shape. Um, however, the vertical axis is different, right? Instead of going from one to, um, you know, instead of going from one to 50 here, because one is equivalence with the, with the red model, it goes, it's everything is normalized to the green curve. So it sets this green curve equal to one. So everything else is relative to it, if that makes sense. And so it gives us the same idea, just a little cleaner without all the other bands to just show us like, you know what, maybe our, our fair value for hex is a two X away, give or take a few, right? So this just gives you kind of, again, this just gives you an idea. It's, it's nothing to take, take home, nothing to, you know, bet literally everything on, right? It's irresponsible, but it's a, uh, it's a chart. I don't think anyone has, man. Like, I, I don't know. I could probably say with certainty, I'm the only person on the, on the planet with this chart. Could be wrong. Maybe there's less than five people on the planet with, the idea to make a chart like this and then to actually make it, I don't know, maybe I'm tooting my own horn here too much, but I think this is a beautiful chart and I think it'd be cool to keep you updated with this. While I was making this video just now, I thought of, cause this dynamic MA, we're only showing it on our, norm, on our normalized charts. I think it would actually be super cool to put it on these non-normalized charts. So it would be, it would, it would be oscillating around, around the green, obviously. Uh, so it would do something like, you know, above it, beneath it. And right now it would be kind of like beneath it. It, it would, relative to the green curve, it would do the same shape. So do something like that, like that, and like that. I think it'd be really cool to see on this non-normalized log chart. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Um, thank you so much for getting me past 2,100 subscribers or super close to 2,200 blowing up. Recently just actually hit the monetization on the channel. So if you're seeing ads, that's why. Uh, I got a ton of comments saying they supported the idea. So I went ahead and did it. And then we'll also have a cool series where whatever ad revenue comes in, we'll make a, say like a monthly video on actually putting that back into hex so that you watching these videos will directly pump hex. I love that little mechanism we got going, but yeah, leave a thumbs up. If you enjoy this kind of hybrid quantitative technical analysis on hex pulse and more be subscribed most definitely by now. If you aren't already leave a, did I say that? Uh, hit the bell because we drop videos every single day on this channel. And yeah, with that said, I'm going to go work out. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.